The Kansas City, Missouri City Council is taking up a proposed ban on what is being called source of income discrimination in renting. Uh, This has been a controversial topic. We talked to the mayor of Kansas City, Quentin Lucas, about this uh, last week. He is a supporter of it. Uh, Nathan Willett is one of the new guys on the block at uh, 12th 12th and Oak. He is on the Kansas City, Missouri City Council representing the Northland. He joins us on KCMO. Uh, Nathan, good morning. Thanks for being here. You're opposed to this. Uh, Let's just start off with what exactly this ordinance is, where it stands, and what at this point it looks like is going to be done about it, if anything. Yeah, well, first off, good morning, Pete, and thank you to all your listeners out there. Um, It has been a uh, crazy four months on the council to start out with. This is our first real hot-button topic, and let me tell you, it is bad. And and it it all comes out to this question, what's the role of local government? And this proposed ordinance would force landlords, property owners, into a federal program. They'd be forced to take Section 8 vouchers um, and then talk about all the bureaucracy and the risk associated with that, and it's, it's not the role of local government. And then even worse, you, can't, uh, you, you are limited on your ability if you're a landlord to see who is the most financially qualified uh, for your unit. So you, you can't, you're limited on looking at credit scores, prior evictions, damages, convictions, and arrests. I mean, this is completely nonsense. Well, uh, you know, what about the mayor who continues to defend it, um, he put up on his social media this morning that this ordinance means simply people can't be banned as a class of renters based on lawful income sources like vouchers, military benefits, pensions, ETC, etc. So is that him softening the language within this ordinance or is there something else going on in your opinion? Well, um, if you remember the one sheeter that the KC tenants put out there, um, and it's changed three different times, they know that this the impacts of this ordinance are not good, and they know that it's not politically even well liked here in Kansas City, and so they just keep changing their talking points around it. But the matter of fact is, it will force landlords to take riskier tenants, and that will raise costs for all all people because who's going to assume all that risk? Um, especially if you take a tenant who's less likely to pay damages, um, that that cost is going to be passed on to everyone else. Landlords are in a business, okay? Now, we can choose to penalize them or we can incentivize them. And what I'm trying to offer today, and it's a resolution that would direct the city manager, is to look at programs that would incentivize landlords to take vouchers or more riskier tenants. But it's not the role of government to force people into federal programs, especially from Kansas City government. Um, And and I'll tell you one other thing. Uh, The mayor talked about last week about uh, people with uh, being arrested on some of the worst crimes imaginable. But if you listen to KCUR last year, yesterday morning, even the local housing authority, Ed Lance, says city regulations wouldn't screen out people who have convicted of some of the worst crimes. And so uh, you can go around and say, I think that it wouldn't limit uh, pedophiles or people with domestic violence charges from um, potentially being screened out. No, no. Actually, those people would not be screened out underneath this proposed ordinance. So you're saying that um, while the mayor said on this show he believes a theoretical pedophile could be rejected as a tenant, you're saying somebody with the local housing authority said on National Panhandler Radio that they Mm -hmm. could not they could not prevent somebody from being a tenant if they are a convicted pedophile. Yep, that's our local housing authority. And by the way, they were not involved with the making of this of this ordinance. And they're the ones who are responsible for federal vouchers and handling that aspect of it. But I, I want to talk to all the voters, I mean, all the, all the people out there in Kansas City and the constituents out there. Um, there are other alternatives. Don't get me wrong. I, I want to be able to help people, but we have to ask ourselves, what are we able to do? And if Kansas City wants to help, we should look at incentivizing. And there's a program out in Johnson County. I think uh, a few people have talked about it previously on your on your show. But what it would do is it would provide a pool of money for potential damages because we know when you uh, people on vouchers, if they have damages, it's less likely to get uh, money back from them versus people who aren't on vouchers. Um, and also the bureaucracy. It takes two months sometimes for people to get a, a person with a voucher on there. And that's two months uh, of rent 
that landlords would not get, but this would cover it and insure it from, from the local government aspect. So let's explore other options and, so, and stay in our lane. So that does, you know, uh, because the mayor will say to us, and I'll agree with him on this, listen, there are people with uh, backgrounds that aren't maybe appealing tenants who are trying to get back mm-hmm. on their feet and do things the right way and, uh, you know, get back into the good graces of, of banks and landlords and things like that, but they don't get an opportunity to do so. You think this is the better way to handle that going forward for the city? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that people in Kansas City uh, uh, believe that. And we, we think that that's a better policy and not policy dominated or, or uh, uh, framed by KC tenants. And I want to remind everyone out there, the two citywide elections, okay, from the council people's side, uh, that the KC tenants supported and endorsed, they lost. This is not good policy. This is not the policy that Kansas City believes in. And so, I mean, I don't mind looking with my, uh, you know, as you know, I'm the only non-Democrat on the council. I don't mind looking at other options and trying to see how we can spend our money in a less wasteful way, you know, and, and something like this is something that I can get behind and look at and support. And I think it's a lot more common sense. Mm-hmm. Nathan Willits joining us, Northland Councilman on KCMO. To me, this is not even a Republican-Democrat issue. This is just common sense. And if you're a Democrat and you're a landlord, I'd be uh, upset about this proposal as well uh, because the KC Tenant Organization is, uh, you know, I mean, it is a socialist operation. That's what it is. And that's what they've been pushing for for two years in this town. It's not red-blue. It's very, very, very progressive. So what about that organization? I mean, they have got a loud voice there at city hall and their presence is only getting larger at city hall so what do common sense kansas cityans need to do to push back on this group and uh, try to knock some sense into your colleagues there at 12th and oak yeah well today at 1 p.m during the legal review committee this ordinance will be heard and i actually carved out some time for my friends at the show me institute to give a economics lesson uh, to some folks who need one and they're going to go in there and talk about other alternatives that will increase the housing supply in Kansas City to truly lower costs. And so we need to we need to show up and, and, and talk about other alternatives. We can't just sit back and let them frame the housing uh, uh, policies here in Kansas City or, 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 or tell us what we can and can't do. There's other people who care about these issues. But if we're not proposing or, or looking at other alternatives, then we're, we're left with one group saying one thing and you just say no, no, no. And I'm here on the council to po- point to other um, alternatives. And I think people can get behind incentivizing and, and telling the city manager, let's come up with a program and let's evaluate it and let's meet the needs of Kansas City rather than, you know, what this organization wants. And it's in their uh, DNA. They want full socialized housing here in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And they, w- they don't believe in personal property rights. And that's very scary. And, and, and that's honestly why I'm on this council to be a watchdog, to fight back against uh, those kind of policies and, and help wake people up. Well, I hope that you can wake up enough of your colleagues. Uh, where do you think the votes stand right now in this proposed ordinance? I don't think the mayor is going to be able to uh, get this ordinance done before the end of the year. And let's remind everyone, this is the last week the council is in session before our Christmas uh, slash winter break. And so there's a reason why, because there's not as many people paying attention, because they know this is a bad policy, and they've changed their po- uh, talking points three different times on it. And uh uh, I, I think that we will we can get together and we have the votes to talk about something to do an incentive um, uh, idea here in, in City Hall. But I, I don't think my colleagues will join and violate people's personal property rights. I, I, at least I hope not. Yeah, I um, I hope not as well. Thanks uh, so much, Nathan Willett. Keep up the good work there in the Northland. We appreciate you joining us on KCMO. All right. Thank you so much, Pete, and have a good holiday season. Merry Christmas. You as well, my friend. Merry Christmas. That is uh, Nathan Willett. Good to have him on KCMO Talk Radio.